So for Alabama and Tennessee, this weekend isn't just a rivalry game, but an opportunity to get a big-time win and hopefully get back on the right track. Today, we need to break it down. We need to talk about who I believe will win, why, and everything in between. But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I have got to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, why for yes and for no. Do you believe Alabama is able to get the W this weekend? Then let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And which matchup should we preview first? It's interesting because if you would have asked me that exact same question over the summer, the answer would have been instant. It would have been Tennessee's offense against this Alabama defense. Tennessee running a veer and shoot based offense, an offense that wants to make a defense choose. Are you going to pool resources to stop the run or are you going to match us on the outside, get your defensive back spread out wide and allow us a lighter box? When that offense is going and it's having success, it's very difficult to stop because it wants to go very fast. And we look at Alabama's defense under Nick Saban, always a vaunted unit, but Nick Saban no longer there. The talent is still there, but there's a lot of changes happening in Tuscaloosa, and I was fascinated to see how this defense would handle it, going from a pattern match-based coverage to a vision and break, and different nuances and wrinkles within the defense. But fast forward to where we currently are, and my answer is actually the opposite. And that's not to say that I'm not excited to see Tennessee's offense against Alabama's defense. We'll certainly talk about that. But I am most excited to see Alabama's offense against Tennessee's defense. Because when we look, Alabama's offense has been fantastic, and as has Tennessee's defense. In fact, when we look, Tennessee is number five in rush defense, allowing 2.24 yards per carry. They're number four in scoring defense and number 32 in passing efficiency defense. When we look at Alabama's offense, they're number 10 in scoring offense. They're number 36 in passing offense. They're number 51 in rush offense. And they're number 35 in total offense. And those numbers are a little bit skewed because earlier on in the season, when Alabama would get out to a big lead, they would kind of just shut it down. So Alabama's offense has been incredibly explosive, regardless of what the numbers say. When you watch them play, they can score with anybody, and they can score really quickly. Georgia found this out. After Georgia mounted that comeback, something that everybody has applauded them for, and look, good for them, no doubt about it. That was very impressive. I've always been surprised that the same praise wasn't levied on Alabama when they survived the comeback, then took out the sword and slayed the giant as they get a massive touchdown from true freshman Ryan Williams. All the analysis that people use to say, oh, Georgia weathered the storm and came back could equally be applied to Alabama weathering the storm and coming back, getting the big touchdown in a big moment and then a big interception. But that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about the matchups in this game and let's start with the injury report for Alabama's offense and Tennessee's defense. For Tennessee, it's unfortunate. They're without their leading tackler and defensive back Jordan Thomas. And for Alabama, Tide fans everywhere are hoping names such as Kobe Prentice and Kendrick Law are a go. Because Kendrick Law and Kobe Prentice just give this Alabama wide receiver room even more weapons. And it's a room that's already looked to be pretty darn good this year. But Kendrick Law is an explosive athlete, someone who Alabama's coaching staff can get real creative with. And furthermore, he's a phenomenal blocker, meaning not only can you get creative utilizing law, you can get creative in some of the things you want to do knowing that you have a guy on the outside that is a dog when it comes to blocking. That's big time names on the injury list for both Tennessee and Alabama. That we're going to have to watch to see if they're able to contribute, how much they're able to contribute, and in Tennessee's case, how they're able to mitigate those losses. For Alabama, I think you'd want to try and establish a run game in this game. And it doesn't matter whether it comes from Jayla Milrow or the running backs, but in a perfect world, I think you want it to be balanced. Because if you get the running backs a bit more involved, you only maximize Milrow's potential to do damage with his legs. And luckily for Tide fans everywhere, Alabama's coaching staff talked this week about wanting to get more involved in the running game with the running backs. I think that would be 
music to all Tide fans if they saw Jam Miller and Justice Haynes get more carries. And I also think it would allow Jalen Milrow to be even more dangerous than he already is. And let's be perfectly honest here. Jalen Milrow is the X factor in this game. His ability to hurt you with his arm and his legs is going to be something we have to watch. But remember, Tennessee is very good against the run. So for Alabama, you're going up against a defense that has been stingy, giving teams yards on the ground. You have to try and weather that storm. Because if you're able to weather that storm, if you're able to get them to pull resources to the interior, you can have opportunities on the exterior. Because Alabama's offense has wide receivers that can win downfield. Ryan Williams has been a problem for every defense out there. And yes, I know South Carolina statistically was his worst game. But if Milrow connects with that first deep shot, we're not having that conversation because he would have had a long touchdown. Ryan Williams has been a thorn in the side of every defender that he's gone against this year. And I expect nothing more than the same in this matchup. He is a very talented prospect. Alabama's got some sneaky wide receiver talent, and I expect it to be utilized. But I really think that establishing a run game can be major, especially when we talk about the flip side, because Alabama wants to try and control the ball better than they have in some of the games this season. And a great way to control the ball is by having an effective run game. So that's going to be something phenomenal to see. Now for Tennessee's defense, James Pierce is someone who the Vols fan base want to see have a big game, especially when Alabama drops back to pass. James Pierce, one of the best players, not only in the SEC, but in the nation. An absolute disruptive force on the interior of that defensive front and a guy that will be playing on Sundays in the very near future. When Alabama drops back, Tennessee fans are going to want to see him hunt to try and get Jayla Milrow on the ground or at the very least get pressure to Jalen Milrow to disrupt the timing of the offense. James Pierce, to me, is the X factor for Tennessee's defense. What he's able to do and how Alabama is able to mitigate what he's able to do, that's going to be the storyline that I'm super excited to see. Because if Alabama can pull resources and nullify James Pierce, I think they've got an opportunity to get something done. And that's not to say that it's just James Pierce on this Tennessee defense. Absolutely not. This is a very, very good Tennessee defense. But that is a dangerous football player. And you have got to figure out a way to not let him have a big-time day. Because if he has a big-time day, it's one of those situations where when it rains, it pours. And you want to try and stop that downpour. So, I think for Alabama's offense, Jalen Milrow is the X factor. I think for Tennessee's defense, James Pierce is the X factor. And it's going to be fascinating to see how Alabama is able to try and put together a game plan against a very stingy run defense and try and move the ball on the ground to open up the passing game. Now, it's easier for Alabama than other teams to try and do that because you have two very, very gifted running backs and a quarterback that is a real menace to get on the ground. He's very strong, he's very fast, and he can hurt you in a lot of ways. So that's the matchup I'm super excited to see. But now let's flip the script. Because starting off this year, Tennessee's offense was on fire, couldn't be stopped. Starting off the year, Alabama's defense was playing phenomenally, getting turnovers, being disruptive. And then the second half of Georgia, Georgia just kind of went for broke, attacked, went all four downs, and we've never seen Alabama's defense play to the standard and capability they set for themselves the early portion of the season. Now, notice I say they set for themselves because I think so many Bama fans get caught up in the Nick Saban Bama standard that you forget that this is a new coaching staff. There's a lot of changes happening, both offensively, defensively, across the board. I'm only holding the defense to the standard they set for themselves this year. And in my opinion, that's the first half against Georgia. And I think that some of those same principles will be employed against Tennessee. Now, why? I think with a young quarterback in Nico, we know his upside is unbelievable. If you've been around my channel, you know I'm a really big fan of Nico. I think that that kid is going to be phenomenal for years to come. And he's only getting better. But I also think he's a young quarterback. He doesn't have a bunch of games under his belt. And you want to try and confuse him so that he gets uncomfortable. Because if he gets comfortable in this veer and shoot offense that goes so fast, that spreads you out so wide, 
it could be a long day, and you could find yourself in a shootout. And while Alabama's offense is certainly equipped for a shootout, they can win those. I don't know that you want to get in shootouts every single game. Not when your defense has shown, hey, we can play real high-quality football. I think that all the new wrinkles in Alabama's defense is causing a little bit of confusion. And it's going to be fascinating to see when all that gets figured out, ironed out, because I do think there are some intriguing players on this Alabama defense, much like I think for Tennessee, you've got a lot to be excited about. Let's start with this matchup where how Tennessee wants to attack. We know they want to run the football. They want to go fast. But they also want you to commit resources to either stop the run or stop the pass, as does every offense in the nation. But Tennessee goes about it a little bit differently, where they put their wide receivers out real wide and make you choose. That makes it very easy for the quarterback to identify what's happening because it's not like you can kind of cheat off of a wide receiver who's close to the line of scrimmage. In Tennessee's case, they spread you out real wide, so the answer is obvious. Who's committed to the run? Who's committed to the pass? The problem with that for defenses that face Tennessee is not only do they have a quarterback in Nico that is mobile, that can run the football and is an explosive athlete and can really throw the football, not only do they have some really nice wide receiver talent, they've got some really good running backs. Dylan Sampson is having himself a year, so you really have to make that choice. For Alabama, in my opinion, this game is about trying to confuse Nico and get them to choose wrong over and over and over again. And we know that the Tide have that capabilities. They did it in the first half against Georgia against a quarterback that's far more seasoned than Nico and Carson Beck. They confused Carson Beck. They showed him one thing pre-snap and something totally different after the ball was snapped. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to achieve that in the same manner against Tennessee because of the way they spread you out. So I'm not sitting here hammering the table saying Alabama needs to do the exact same thing they did against Georgia. I'm saying they need the exact same philosophy against Georgia. I'm very excited to see how they go about trying to achieve that philosophy. For Tennessee, they want to put Alabama's defense on their heels. Because when we look, I gave you the numbers for both Alabama's offense and Tennessee's defense earlier. Now let's do the flip side. Alabama's defense is number 55 in the nation in rush defense, allowing 3.33 yards per carry. They're number 42 in scoring defense, and they're the number 28 in passing efficiency defense. When we look at Tennessee's offense, Tennessee's offense is the number 9 in scoring offense. A lot of that coming earlier in the season, where they were just destroying teams, but ever since they've gotten into SEC play, that offense has kind of stagnated, sort of like Alabama's defense, where when they got in SEC play, They've kind of hit a roadblock, but that's why this game is so fascinating. Tennessee is the number 61 passing offense. They're the number seven rushing offense and number nine total offense. So for me, I think Tennessee is going to look at this and realize even though Alabama's secondary is young and a lot of people say, oh, well, they get beat over the top. I've never thought they got beat over the top at the rate that so many people talk about. Now, maybe this will come back to bite me, but... I think that despite the age, Alabama's secondary has shown glimpses of being a really exciting unit, one that I look forward to watch play every single week. Tennessee has got a really good rush attack. I think they're going to try and lay the foundation on the ground in this game, utilizing their very talented running backs against an Alabama defense that hasn't been the normal Alabama stonewall defense up front. Now, the interesting thing is, is if Alabama can key in on that, they can pool resources to try and stop it, or at the very least, show you that, hey, we are going to have a light box up until you snap the ball. And that's something that teams here recently have done to nullify or attempt to nullify this Tennessee rush attack. They show them a lighter box at the point of the snap, and when the, once the ball is snapped, they bring some pressure. I think Alabama is going to employ that as well. So I think for Tennessee, you're going to try and get the game going on the ground. For Alabama, you're going to, once again, mix up what this Tennessee coaching staff and young quarterback are seeing pre and post snap. At the end of the day, I think Alabama pulls out a win. And one of the reasons I think Alabama pulls out a win is I think that Alabama this season has played to the level of their competition. Whether that's good, whether that's bad, but that's just kind of what I've seen. 
whenever we look, Vandy was a game that was truly interesting from the perspective of Vandy is a team Alabama should beat. But they were coming off of a Georgia win where I think emotions were real high. They got punched in the mouth not once, not twice, but a few times. And when they look up, they're going up against an offense that's real hard to come back on because of the way they're able to control the football. And it was just too much. Against South Carolina, I think Alabama probably played their worst game on offense. Now, some of that is because South Carolina has got a pass rush duo that's incredible, but a lot of it to me was missed opportunities. And even the players and coaches talked about that. When I look at Tennessee, Tennessee has left me with a bit more questions once they got into SEC play, specifically on that offense. And in my opinion, if you're talking about the best part of your team being your defense against Alabama's offense, that's going to be a game that gives us fireworks. But Alabama's offense can score, and they can score real quick, as can Tennessee's offense. But something hasn't looked quite right here recently with Tennessee's offense. That being said, I think Tennessee is one of those programs that's as talented and good as Basically, any team in the nation outside of Texas, who I think is playing the most consistent football right now. But outside of that, I think Tennessee is a really darn good football team. Wouldn't shock me at all to see the Vols continue having a very successful season. So anybody can win this game, especially being that it is at Tennessee. But at the end of the day, I like Alabama because I think they play to the level of their competition, and I expect an Alabama team that wants to send a statement this weekend. I can't wait to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. That's it. See you.